All right, so in this video we're going to take a look at uh, this amplifier. It's always shitty on AliExpress to zoom in. Let's uh, do it the classic way. Um, so it's a ripoff from the Yuan Jin design. Right? It, it even keeps the logo, so maybe they are licensing it off to the, to the seller, to Breeze Audio Store, so <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I'm apparently the only one who got this. I was quite happy to see the Yuan Jin design, uh, logo, right? And I... By now, I kind of recognize the, their style, right? And I've also seen this particular amplifier on their website. They're always quite expensive, right? So the, it's 21 bucks here. They have gone down in price since last year, where when they were simply ridiculous. I, I would assume you can get it for like below 30. The problem on Yuanjin is uh, the shipping is ridiculously expensive now. So I've always tried to buy directly from them but never could right so I'm buying from Breeze Audio apparently anyway so uh, what is to be noted about the Yuan Jin designs uh, apart from like being well done uh, they're uh, the way they spec the the output filter is uh, is good right because uh, they don't act like heaters right so I've tried if you've been following my channel, I've tried at least four amplifiers. The two Yuan Jin were fine. Uh, there's the uh, 2.1 amp, which is also fine, but that kind of is meh, a bit more dodgy than these. And these are as good as it gets, right? So at 25 volts input, they'll use. Actually, let's uh, let's test it out. Okay, so if it wasn't cluttered before, I've brought in my uh, power monitor. And uh, yeah, as I was saying, right, the main attraction, right, the main selling point, I would say, of these uh, Yuan Jin designs is, first of all, it's a brand that you know, right, and so far I haven't come across any any amplifiers from them that sucked. This is an exception, though, but however, the main filter stage, right, which is the main, the most crucial component of any TPA3116 amplifier, right? So this filter stage with the inductors and the capacitors and some resistors. Apparently everyone fuck the, fucks this up, right? Because um, I've had some amplifiers, I've even shown in, in videos, they would just simply cook up the inductors, right? They would get so warm, they would darken uh, uh, thermal paper, right? So you definitely couldn't touch them, right? So these actually reduce the quiescent draw to very close to what the data sheet specs for the TPA3116, right? So the TPA3116 is a very nice chip, but it's very fussy, right? It's not a robust chip in the way that it you can, like, for example, the YDA138, uh, I think it is, right? It's a, it's a lower wattage chip, right? Also the TPA3110, 3118, those you can do whatever the fuck you want, right? You can turn them on off. There's absolutely no thump. The inductors don't get hot, right? With these, it's apparently quite tricky to, to get the staging right. And uh, and Yuanjin definitely does, right? Because as you can see, right, I'm going to turn it on. And it's 53 while it's muted. And 83 standby draw, right? So that is very impressive, right? Very impressive for one of these. And this is at 24 volts, keep in mind, right? So yeah, basically the data sheet specs. So, uh, where is it? So quiescent supply current, 50 milliamps at 24 volts, right? So, we're getting 82. I'm I'm gonna call that a good, a good day, right? A good result. Um, however, there are some problems with this amplifier, right? With this particular amplifier. So let's turn it off, and uh, there still is a turn off thumb. All right. So if we take a closer look at this, uh, we can see that there's the uh, LM1036M equalizer chip. So this is very nice. Um, actually does work quite nicely so I this is quite a long range uh, don't ask me what the cutoffs are and how they, I don't know it's it's fine I just have a look at what I'm what I'm working with 
So I'm actually building a sound base which will use two of these tweeters and four uh, this thick and this wide speakers, right? Like I think they're 45 millimeters or something. This is just my test speaker for car stereos and it also has a, a direct input. All right, so the problems with this amplifier start with the turn on thumb. As I've mentioned, uh, these chips are very fussy, so without a turn on thump avoiding circuitry, so to call it, so to say, uh, basically the moment you feed 24 volts into them, they will route all of that towards your speakers, possibly blowing the chip in the process, right? Which is what I did in the, I think, second shitty amp video. I'll link it up here. I think that's what happened in that one. So it's a very, very bad scenario. You're stressing your power supply, your amplifier, and your speakers. So, very bad. Basically, the way you have to start these up is start them with mute. So with voltage on the mute pin, more than 2 volts, is what the data sheet says. And then wait for 4 seconds or 2 seconds. I think you can wait for like one and a half, two seconds. It's roughly what I would estimate. Wait that much until the biasing stabilizes and uh, release the mute pin and um, basically activate the, the amplifier. Also at, the, at shutdown you also have to energize the mute pin which I'm not doing because yeah, uh, to avoid a turn off thump but the turn off thump is never that aggressive right because you don't have your full supply feeding into it you just have these two capacitors which are what a thousand mic so you have two two thousand microfarads so if you have like two speakers yeah it's not gonna be that big of a deal so to make uh, that uh, anti-pop circuit link in the description I have a uh, in the whatever like card whatever that is um, I have made a video showing how to implement one of those but yeah I'm, I'm gonna go over it again in, in this video it's basically two components you need, a capacitor and a Schottky diode. And it has to be a Schottky diode, not a normal silicon diode. And all of these, right, all of the topologies, all, the, all of them are very, very similar in layout. So you will find, let me get a pointing device and let's actually zoom in. So you will find from pin, let's actually also whip out the data sheet. There we go. All right, so this is the example schematic, right? And we have the 12th pin, the mute pin, just simply going to ground via this 100K resistor. So that's basically all there is to it. That's what, that is what uh, TI say, right? That you should do. And uh, it's not good, let me tell you, let me tell you. And so usually you will find, right, looking at the amplifier like this right with the outputs on top on the bottom right section so on this side you're expected to find a 100k resistor because it, usually they do follow the the schematics recommendation right so it's this one right 100k and what you'll want to do is botch this Schottky diode with the negative pointing towards the chip right so aiming towards the chip and what this does is it prevents any negative voltages on the mute pin because at shutdown your capacitor will still be charged and you will have basically a positive with respect to ground to which this is connected to, right? Don't really need to understand why it's needed, just you, you definitely need it and you don't want to avoid it. So first go to the store, you probably have capacitors Go to the store, get some Schottky diodes if you don't have them. They're pretty cheap, so. Um, yeah, so basically you take one pin of the uh, of the capacitor, right? The, the negative pin in this case. If you're using a polarized capacitor, if you're using one of these, eh, you don't care. Um, I've actually used, in the previous video that I've linked uh, previously, I've actually used one microfarad uh, non-polar capacitors and that has worked. In this case, for some reason, it actually doesn't work. So I'm not sure what exactly is different in this topology, but uh, I've needed to use a much bigger capacitor. So I'm using 
22 microfarads and 10 microfarads would be fine. I just don't have any. So this mutes it for quite a bit too long, right? I, I'd even say double the amount of time that I would find as optimal. Uh, in any case, 22 microfarads works fine. Just don't go like overboard. Less than 50 because otherwise it's going to be muted for like 10 seconds at startup. So, and really nobody got time for that. So the negative you're taking, you're taking the negative of the capacitor and taking it to the negative of the diode, right? Taking it basically to the mute pin. And the positive of the capacitor we're going to take to this capacitor here which you'll always find, right, roughly in this, this topology, right, you have two capacitors, these will be some, some inputs, some audio inputs, and then you'll have this capacitor, or I, I think so, and then you'll have this capacitor here, right, and this one actually goes to GVDD, which is a voltage source generated inside of this chip, and it's usually 6.9 volts. Right, it goes to this pin and it actually comes out of pin 7, right? So 7 and 6 are tied together and they will go to this capacitor and this is the one we're seeing here, C39, 1 microfarad. So in this case, this is C39, 1 microfarad and you can even see it marked as 1 microfarad on the board. And it is going to pins 6 and 7, and pin 6 is this one, and 7 is the one that has no trace coming out of it. But it's actually tied to 6, right? And so at startup, this will start, I, I think it might be linear, because it says, it says under no circumstances draw any current from it. So, yeah. Which we kind of are a little bit, but anyway. Uh, so at startup, right, this is going to start charging the capacitor, Right? and actually put a voltage on the mute pin until the capacitor becomes completely charged and it's at ground potential on uh, on the negative side right but while it's passing current while it's getting charged it actually will mute the chip and this is exactly what we want all right and the only other problem that this uh, amplifier had which is not really a problem in and of itself was the background noise and that was quite quite uh, bothersome especially that I'm planning on using some tweeters uh, the tweeters are actually gonna go on a separate TPA 3110 amplifier but anyway these still picked up a lot of background noise so you could hear it from very far away right and that's really not acceptable so uh, that was actually caused by uh, the setup they've they've chosen you can actually use these this chip in uh, a few gain configurations uh, and the way these work is basically the amplifier is full on and you only limit the input to it with this you don't actually limit uh, the bias or whatever the concept of bias is also very different for these anyway so what you do is uh, you set up two resistors to uh, to get like uh, a gain level and in this case you can also use it uh, to set it as a slave in case you have more of these and you want all of them to have the same clock you would set one of them as master and then the rest as, as slaves anyway so what they had was uh, 120 which corresponds to 26 db of gain which, yeah, is, is still fine, right? They could have gone for 36, which probably is ridiculously noisy. Uh, however, I have uh, opted to pull out the uh, 100K resistor and actually put a 5.6K one to actually go for the lowest gain, right? Which is 20 dB, which is still plenty. It's, it's definitely worth the sacrifice, right? In gain to, to actually not have the background noise. And so yeah, that is basically what is happening over there. And uh, with that, this amplifier is actually very usable. So I, I would definitely 100% recommend the anti-pop circuit and the gain, right? Whatever floats your boat, right? If, if you need it, do it. If you don't, 
then don't. Alright, hope this helped. Have a good one guys.